Now, Rav Chaim Ivolojin, the student of the Gaon Mivina over 200 years ago. He was the rabbi that the Russian communist came and told him, you have to teach Russian in yeshiva, just like they do here in New York. They want you to teach the kids English and history and who knows what else. Math. Why? Because some yeshivot, especially Hasidim, they don't want any American influence. Definitely they don't want secular study in the same class when you learn the holy Torah of God. Don't mix Chol and Kodesh. So what happened? The city starting to bully them. You want assistance? We have board of education. We help schools. We help education. We are not racist. We help the blacks. We help the Chinese. We want to help the religious Jews. But we have conditions. We give money. You will teach what we tell you. Just like in the synagogue. I sponsor the shul. Rabbi, make sure you do what I tell you. <laughs> buy from here, don't buy from there. Don't give this guy aliyah, make sure you give this guy aliyah. But it's Mechalel Shabbat, close your eyes. Don't get me angry. I just gave you $30,000 yesterday, no? Please, Rabbi, don't be ungrateful. Well, wait, you are the sponsor, I am the spiritual leader. We can compromise. Here in Israel, they try to compromise now. That's what's going on. So over there, Avotai, they came to Rav Chaim Ivolojin and they say, if you're not going to teach Russian, we'll close your yeshiva. And he said, I'm not going to surrender to you. And they closed the yeshiva. And how many yeshivot opened thanks to that? Ten. Every big chacham went to a different place and opened a yeshiva. That's why they call Rav Chaim Ivolojin Avi Ayeshivot. The father of yeshivas, plural. Why? Thanks to him being zealous to Hashem and not surrendering to the Russian wicked communist. Thanks to that we got instead of one yeshiva, ten. Or maybe more by now. So, Rav Chaim Ivolojin, one of the supporters of his yeshiva passed away. Before he passed, he asked Rav Chaim to learn Mishnayes for his Neshama. Mishnayot, to learn Mishnah, to elevate his soul. Rav Chaim, of course, kept his promise and was learning Mishnayot for that wealthy supporter. But he learns deep until he came to one Mishnah and he got stuck. He had a big question, he didn't know the answer. Then he fell asleep at night. Shortly after he fell asleep, who came to him in a dream? That rich man. And told him the answer to his question in this Mishnah. Even though when he was alive, he didn't know anything. He didn't even know how to open the Mishnayot. And Rav Chaim Ivolojin say, who told me the secret of this Mishnah? The person that sponsored the yeshiva. He went up to Shamaim, and here is the proof of what the Gemara said. That the Zvulun get full, full position. He owns all the Torah that people learn thanks to his money. Which is an also logically makes a lot of sense. So here you go, Rabotai. So don't eat your heart too much. Some, some wealthy people, they came to big rabbis and said, listen, I'm tired of working. I have enough money. I want to retire. And the rabbi said, no, I want to go full time to yeshiva. I barely learn an hour a day. I want to sit all day and learn. I have enough money. I don't need to worry. You're not allowed. You have to continue to work. Why? Since when a rabbi tell a person, don't come to yeshiva, unless if he's a liberal. <laughs> For him, it's better he'll go to university. But a real kosher rabbi, when someone come and ask him, rabbi, what do you think I should do? Should go to college or should go to a good yeshiva? 
What is the question? There's any dilemma here? But what with Parnassah? Again this question? Again, again this heresy? Again, where is the minimum amount of faith that Hashem fed us for 40 years in the desert without education, without college degrees, without hard work, first shift, second shift, night shift, 40 years, 3 million people ate and survived. It's a fact. Even the Goim admit. Can you feed 3 million people in the middle of nowhere? Without education? <laughs> ah, what do you think? Okay, let's say who has a master degree, come, I'll give you a piece of bread today. <laughs> Hashem, we never went to college. Okay, so you didn't go to college, so I'll starve you to death. Make sense? Only by heretics. Heretics think the more I'm going to go against Hashem's will, the more he's going to give me money. The more I will go with his command, the less he's going to give me good. Righteous person, leave the stupid university logic aside and come to only one conclusion. It can never be that I would listen to Hashem and make him happy and give up all kinds of opportunities to make money by gaining a degree and finding a job in finance and who knows what. It cannot be that I'm going to give it up, even though I have connection and they offer me a, a job and they give me a, some kind of a scholarship, whatever. And I went to learn full-time Torah, 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 Torah. And because I learned for five, ten years Torah, Hashem prepared a long, long knife and stuck it in my back. Hi, Hashem, why are you doing this to me? How dare you not going to the Sodom and Gomorrah college and instead you went to the Holy Yeshiva? How dare you? Why, Hashem, I thought you'll be happy. What about Parnassah? <laughs> I was counting on you. Don't worry, I was just joking. <laughs> You're good. You think he's going to make less than someone else? 